What should you be doing before bed to help you sleep at night? And what should you be doing during the night when you're finding it hard to sleep? And what can you do when all your best laid plans get interrupted? For example, friends come over to stay or there's dogs barking in the neighborhood. I'm going to be talking about all these things in today's video. Hi, I'm Martin Reed. If you have insomnia, I offer sleep coaching programs that will give you all the skills and support you need to enjoy better sleep for the rest of your life. You can learn more at insomniacoach.com. Now, one of the core components of the most effective long-term treatment for chronic insomnia, cognitive behavioral therapy for insomnia, is sleep restriction. And this involves allotting an appropriate amount of time for sleep, which is quite close to your current average nightly sleep duration. And this helps build sleep drive during the day to help you sleep at night, leads to more consolidated sleep and less time awake during the night. Now, oftentimes I get questions from people that ask me, what should they be doing before the start of their sleep window? And to this, my answer is pretty straightforward. You should just be doing anything that you find relaxing and enjoyable because no activity is going to generate sleepiness or sleep. All you're looking to do as your sleep window approaches is anything that you find relaxing and enjoyable, anything that kind of distracts your mind from any potential worry or anxiety you have about sleep. Also, by making sure you pursue only relaxing and enjoyable activities, it can make it easier for you to recognize cues for sleepiness. And this is important because when we live with insomnia, it's so easy to mistake fatigue with sleepiness or to just go to bed before we're sleepy enough for sleep. Another question that I get is related more with stimulus control, another CBTI technique. And stimulus control is all about retraining yourself to see the bed as a place for sleep instead of wakefulness. So if you're in bed during the night really struggling with sleep, often it's a good idea to just get out of bed and do anything again that you find relaxing and enjoyable to distract you from thinking about and obsessing about sleep and to just give you a more pleasurable alternative to staying in bed struggling with sleep. So I wanted to make this video because it's so common that I get questions from people that ask me what kind of activities should they be doing as the sleep window approaches or during the night when they're struggling to sleep. For example, what food and drink can I eat as bedtime approaches? Is it okay to exercise close to bedtime? Can I use the computer? Can I do yoga? Is it okay to read? Can I listen to an audio book? Ultimately, ultimately, it's just down to whatever you find relaxing and enjoyable. Of course, if you find that a particular activity makes it more difficult for you to fall asleep, for example, if you do a really, really intense workout or watch a terrifying movie just before bed, that might make your sleep more difficult. And if it does, you know that's something that's probably best for you to, to avoid close to bedtime on a personal level. And then finally, we have the other big concern is, what should I do when there's things that are gonna occur that are gonna disrupt my sleep window? So for example, what if I have friends over? What if it's really noisy in the neighborhood? What if I'm traveling? What if I wanna go out to a party or socialize with friends? In this case, it's really important to bear in mind that life happens and we wanna enjoy life. Sometimes life gets in the way of our best laid plans. So if you're observing a regular sleep window and you want to have a party with friends, have a party with friends because being social and enjoying life is far more important than observing your sleep window for one night. All I would suggest is if there are external interruptions to your sleep window, for example, you want to go out one night or you want to have friends over or there's dogs barking in the neighborhood or sirens going off, still try and make sure you get out of bed by the same time in the morning even if you only get a couple of hours of sleep or no sleep, because this gives your body clock a really strong morning anchor and it helps you build sufficient sleep drive during the day to increase your chances of a better sleep the following night. So I hope you found this short video helpful. 
If you did, please click the like button and subscribe to the channel and click the notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. I do try and share some new sleep snippet videos each week. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, or suggestions for a future video, please leave a comment below, or you can email me directly. My email address is hello at insomniacoach.com. Thanks for watching. And as always, I'd like to leave you with this important reminder. You can sleep.